Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Now, I trust that you are delighting yourself in Jesus this morning, that your mind is upon the things of heaven, and that you sense the sweet tenderness of his spirit breathing and alive within you. Well, we are continuing our study in the book of Hebrews, and today we are going to finish chapter 6. So we're going to begin in verse 13. Now, I've got a little egg on my face this morning. And what I mean by that is I was reviewing the books of the Bible that I have read so far this month and reading five chapters every single day. And I only say this to encourage you and to alert you to the mistake that I made. Now, to encourage you, I have read the book of Romans, the book of Hebrews, the book of John, the book of 1 Corinthians, the book of 2 Corinthians, the book of Mark, Galatians, and I'll be reading Ephesians today, which means with only 10 days left in the month, there's no possible way I will read the remainder of the New Testament. For I still have the book of Revelation, the book of Matthew, the book of Luke, the book of Acts, the rest of Paul's epistles, all three of John's letters, Peter's letters, James' letter, and Jude's letter. And this is what I mean by egg on my face, which I'm surprised that you, the viewer, didn't catch as well. There are 260 chapters in the New Testament. If you divide that into 30 days, that's 8.5 chapters a day. If you divide it into 31 days, it's 8.3 chapters a day, which means that you could read the New Testament once every two months, which I have been telling you once every month. I have made that a focal point over the last several weeks, so on many of the videos that have already been produced, I cannot go back and change that error, but I simply want to let you know that you will read the New Testament once every 60 days if you read five chapters of the Bible every day, leaving you a few days to go back and maybe read your favorite book, maybe the book of Hebrews or the book of Romans or one of the Gospels or Acts, which for me this month, I'll be going back and reading the book of 2 Corinthians, which has really spoken to me for some reason this month. Well, having said that, and with an apology offered, a deep, regretful apology offered, if you've been reading along with me, I would love to hear from you. Tell me what you have learned so far, both by reading several books of the Bible up until this point, and maybe even what this has meant in your life. The second thing I'd like to mention before we jump into our text this morning is that we have done several teaching series entitled The Road to Calvary. After that three-part series, then is the Book of Humility by Andrew Murray. I want to encourage you to, if you haven't participated in this, start at the Road to Calvary Book 1, then go to Road to Calvary Book 2, Road to Calvary Book 3, and then join us in the one that is ongoing, which is Humility. After this will be Absolute Surrender. And these all work in succession. And friends, I promise you, nothing will change your life more than the study of these four series. No other book has impacted my life outside the Bible as the book of humility by Andrew Murray. So if you're not participating in these studies, go back and listen to them. It's simply a reading of the books, and they're all very short books. But you will be deeply blessed and challenged and enlightened in so many ways that will help you in your spiritual journey. Well, with all of that being said and half of our time gone, let's jump into our text this morning. I want to look at the book of Hebrews chapter 6 and let's begin at verse 13. Well, actually, let's back up one verse to verse 12. It says, do not be slothful, do not be lazy, do not be uncommitted or inconsistent in your Christian disciplines, but be followers of them who through faith and patience inherited the promises. Learn from those who have gone before us and many of those we can read about in the Old Testament. He says in verse 13, when God made promise to Abraham that he would bear a child in his old age, and Abraham at the time was 75, 
He could swear by no greater. So he swore by himself. There is no greater than Yahweh. All the gods, the little g gods that have come after him, all will bow their knee before him if they even exist because he is the great and the almighty and there is none above him. So when he made this promise to Abraham, he had to swear by himself unto himself because there is none greater. You've heard people say, I swear to God, which of course we should never do, but what they're doing is they're swearing by a higher order. But God himself, Yahweh, cannot do that because there is none greater. And so he swear in his oath in verse 14, saying, surely blessing, I will bless thee and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he, Abraham, had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Abraham waited upon God to fulfill his promise for 25 years. We seem to give up on God after a few days, a few weeks. And so it points out Abraham patiently endured and waited for God to fulfill his promise. He says in verse 16, men verily swear by the greater and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife or an end of all opposition, an end of all dispute. When two people form an oath with one another, now they're bound by the oath and and there's no purpose or reason for dispute because the oath settles the dispute. In verse 17, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability or the unalterableness of his counsel, he confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable or unalterable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation, a strong comfort, a strong encouragement, because we can stand upon the promises of God. Because as it said, God is a God who cannot lie. And because we stand upon these promises, we have fled for refuge unto these promises, unto this hope, to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us that these dark and dreary days that we so often experience upon these earth are going to be highlighted by the glory of the Almighty whom we will live with and spend eternity with. And it is this hope in verse 19 that we have as an anchor of the soul. Now an anchor is something that holds us firmly. So our soul is anchored in these promises. That's why in James chapter 1 verse 6 it says, Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavers or he that is unanchored is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed all about. But when our soul is anchored in the Almighty, we can't be tossed all about. That's what Jesus meant in Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 when he says, Therefore, whosoever heareth, these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man who has built his house upon a rock. Or we could say who has anchored his soul upon the truths and the promises of God. And when the rains of life descend, and the floods come, and the winds blow, and they beat upon that house, it will not fall or it will not be moved for it was founded upon a rock, or it was anchored in the promises of God. And that's what he tells us in verse 19 of Hebrews chapter 6, this hope we have is an anchor of the soul. It is sure and steadfast. It is unmoving. It is unchangeable. And when all has been stripped from us, even to the point of forsaking the very lives that we live, giving our last breath for that which we believe. We can stand sure and firm upon the promises of God that the moment we take that last breath, we now step into eternity, into the glory, into the presence of God, no longer plagued by the harassment of this world. For all will be joy, all will be peace, All will be glory and wonder as we step into eternity with our glorious blessed Lord to join him there where he waits for us. And so again in verse 19, it is this hope that we have as an anchor of the soul, 
both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, whither the forerunner, which is Jesus, has entered in before us. And he was made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, a mysterious man in scripture, which we'll discuss on tomorrow's video. But friends, for today, for this morning, what blessed hope that has been offered unto us, what blessed truths we have been reminded of, that we can anchor our souls in the promises of the Almighty, because he is a God that cannot lie, hallelujah. And so no matter what you're going through today, no matter what life is presenting you, friend, stand strong, patiently endure, for the reward that awaits you is great, and it is true, and he who has promised it unto you is faithful and can be depended upon. Well, I trust that this passage has blessed you this morning, friends. I trust that it has moved you in a way that only the word of God can. And I pray that it has inspired you to live more faithfully for your Lord Jesus, whom you serve. Now, as he wills and until tomorrow, I truly love you, friends, and I'll see you on the next video.